Hello everyone, Jeff here from Respawn Studios, finally back with part 11 of my Up the Ladder series, my attempt to reach Legend in the June 2015 season of Hearthstone. I haven't been playing in the last probably week because I've had a crazy stressful situation going on in a summer class I'm teaching, but I think it got resolved today, so I finally decided to dive back in. Um, I am now... Um, using my druid deck and we are going to now tie the highest I've ever been in Hearthstone so I'm pretty excited. Uh, we're going to watch the entirety of four games here. This first one was one I recorded over a week ago I think um, when I was still using my Tempo Mage deck. This will take us to three stars into rank five and then three druid games will get us up to uh, one star into rank four and that's where we're going to end uh, this part of the video. Or this part of the series, I should say. Uh, so, Tempo Mage against Druid, not ideal. But having Counterspell, um, blocking a swipe could be huge. Mirror Entity, getting like a Lotheb or Sludge Belcher is always good. I always love to coin out a Mad Scientist. Um, but here, I'm actually going to... I know this might seem like a misplay, and for a lot of people, they might already be saying, misplay, you're horrible. <laughs> but um, I don't want to give them the two-for-one trade with the scientist and then have to waste um, my next turn pinging the um, zombie chow. So I just give him his good value trade there. I don't really have any spells that I need to be brought down right now anyway. So I just, again, made that play to clear the board, not give him a good two-for-one. And now I can play Scientist and he has nothing out there probably for a turn or two. Though he did get to use a Wild Growth so he could get a Piloted Shredder. Or he could uh, Keeper the Grove Silence my Mad Scientist. <laughs> Earlier I ran into one of the strangest plays. I was playing as a Hunter. I know, haha, I'm an idiot. Um, and the guy used innervated out Keeper of the Grove to silence my web spinner. What? <laughs> that was a game at rank 6 that I was playing. Because um, I had lost a couple games when I started playing today. I was no stars into rank 5 and I lost one. Uh, so I decided to try Hunter and I ran into that. And I'm like, no. <laughs> this is too bizarre. I have to go back to Druid. <laughs> I did win that game, but I then lost the next one. Alright, perfect. I'm able to <laughs> use Polymorph on his Sylvanas and I keep mine alive and the Scientist alive. Really big tempo play right there. So not the worst clear for him, but he will take a good amount of damage there. And I now have a secret up. So Kazan Mystic, of course, most likely will not come into play unless he also uses a Kazan Mystic, but I'm not betting on that. So I also want to keep the tempo by having a board while he does not. So decide to play both Kazan Mystic and the Worm there. All right, so now he knows it's not mere entity. That would have probably totally crippled him. But we do have flame cannon here. We will have to, unfortunately, trade the worm off, but whatever. He, again, has a clear board. We have two minions and counterspell. So we're in really, really good shape. Um, you see this is also before the heroes were released. So I guess this is actually before last Tuesday. So this is well <laughs> over a week ago um, that this happened because I bought the um, Medivh and I'm using that now. I think the card back from Medivh is horrible, but the voice and the picture are really cool. Uh, the Hunter card back, alternate um, hero card back is awesome. That green and 
like dark gray design. I love that. I don't think the warrior guy is good at all, that dwarf. But we'll see. There's six more heroes to come. And there we go. Our first of, I think, a couple concedes. There we go. Three stars into rank five. So climbing up and up. And again, now we have made the switch to um, essentially a ramp druid. I have one, well, no, two slight variations. Well, well, the more I think about it, the more variations I have in my deck. Uh, I run an Earthen Ring Farseer, as you see there. Um, I think in an earlier video in this series, I ran a, what are they called? Druid of the Flame or something. You could make it into a 2-5 or the 5-2. Um, I've cut those out. So I have the um, Earthen Ring Farseer now. I still use a Healing Touch. Because you run into decks like this. And this was awesome. This was Sweet Revenge. I had played this guy earlier. Um, and he had beat me using the stupid aggro paladin. That's for some reason become so popular, I guess, because you get cheap wins. It's To me, this is infinitely worse than Face Hunter. The aggro paladin takes even less thought. <laughs> And I only lost to him because I was also playing Destiny. And he had um, like 6 health. And I didn't realize the previous turn how many times he had hit me. I was only at 9 health. So I left him um, with an, exactly enough to do 9 the following turn. He was at 1 health. It was pretty terrible. So, yeah, it's going to be weird. I'm going to innervate out <laughs> things that... Most often you do not, but I know exactly what he's trying to do. So I'm trying to remove his threats as much as possible so he can't buff them up with Blessing of Kings or um, those attack buffs. Or just make it snowball that his board fills up and I have no response. But I am sitting on a healing touch, which is good. And a potential taunt, which is always good. <laughs> look look how difficult it is for him to think I could just see like the smorks in a twitch chat at this <laughs> mistake go face always face <laughs> like it's such a difficult to say oh no I can't go face here I really need to trade or I'm really far behind because he could just use his hero power to clear the wolf rider it's just embarrassing if you have to run a deck where the only thing you do ever is go face, you just shouldn't be playing. I have 400 wins with, like 406 ranked wins with Hunter, and I've never played a face Hunter. It's just so bad. It's not that I've ever been for control decks. I don't think like long games mean there's the equivalent to skill. It's just that the complete lack of skill and thought in face decks is just absurd. I see why it's a part of the game. A lot of people aren't able to think. <laughs> but, uh, okay, so the decision here was either to play the 4 6 taunt or um, the shade with the hero power. I decided to meet halfway down. Um, I'm going to play a 4 6 with taunt. And then to reduce the chances or easy clears he has for it, um, I'm also going to innervate out uh, the means to kill the, um, the <laughs> sorry, coin out the uh, hero power to take out the leper gnome. <coughs> the other good thing about aggro paladin, they do not run quartermaster, so there's no threat at all to their 1-1. Again, the video just froze there in my little screen. I hope that doesn't actually mean that the video itself is going to be frozen there for a little bit. But if you've stuck through it, even if it did, thank you. <laughs> Alright, so swipe here. Wait, what? It must have... Oh, gosh. I really hope that it didn't mess up that way. It showed, like, it continuing normal and then skipped, like, 20 seconds. I was going to explain why 
I chose to do swipe there, even though it was meaningless one ones. Again, it's about um, board control and the fact that he could buff them up or potentially even run um, the. Oh my gosh, now I'm blanking on names because that mess up in the video is throwing me off. Um, oh my god, I always blank on like the most obvious card names when I'm doing my commentaries. It's pretty spectacular. But anyway, um, taunting them up. So you see, we have a pretty terrible hand here, but he's starting to run out of cards. <laughs> and you see how desperate he is. He's using his ultimate weapon to go face. So I say, oh, natural mistake. Now next turn, I have Sylvanas and Hero Power to clear his 1-1. was considering Sludge Belcher, but he could do a couple bad things there. <laughs> and I want to potentially draw out a Silence for Sylvanas, so then I get good value with the Sludge Belcher, because I don't really want to take anything of his. I'd rather him silence Sylvanas, which is exactly what he does, because, again, not thinking he's dumb. <laughs> Natural mistake. But you see his... Um, his name in the game is, I guess, his YouTube channel, so maybe he's recording videos for Hearthstone. That would be hilarious, like talking strategy when there's nothing involved at all with his Paladin deck. Alright, so now kind of blocked off a lot of things he could do, wondering whether or not I should attack here. And because there's no real threat of another silence in all likelihood, and I want to put a lot of pressure on him, I'm going to unveil the shade. So you see he's on full-on desperate mode here. <laughs> so I keep spamming natural mistake. All of these terrible decisions. So, my next turn, I could uh, answer him by just going face and make him have to do trades to stay alive, but no. I'm just going to keep clearing his things. Um, so, you see, I don't even care what I get. I'm already going to heal. That, I knew I was going to make this play. Um, but I'm going to keep his board as clear as possible. Yeah, it's dangerous that I drew cards because his one card might be a divine favor where he draws cards to match how many I have in my hand, but I'm so far ahead right now, I'm not really worried about it. Again, these aggro decks don't run like intelligent combos, like the devastating equality into consecration. Usually they don't even run one equality. Just to concentrate the consecrations to try and do face damage. And there we go. <laughs> he concedes because he finally realizes he has no chance. And the deck he's playing hopefully is garbage. Hopefully he's coming to that realization. All right, but here we go. <laughs> Two more games. I'm pretty sure both of these were against Handlock. I just played these. Yeah. Two different Handlock players. Steven and then a different guy. It's not the same player in the next one. So pretty great opening hand here. Uh, Two Wild Gross. But I'm thinking maybe it is Zoo, because I didn't know, of course, <laughs> who I'm facing. Unlike that previous game where I had faced him earlier. But almost can't get a better opening hand than this. Have either a good 4-drop just to put out there, or a good way to silence or kill off a little guy for Zoo. So Shredder versus Handlock, or... Keeper for Zoo. And we even draw into a shade, so I don't have to play the wild growth and waste one mana crystal here. Um, so Hamlock was hugely popular two or three weeks ago, like everyone was playing it again, but it really seems to have fallen off. Like, <laughs> I haven't really encountered it that much. I've, I'm mostly running into um, Control Warrior or the Aggro Paladin, I'd say, are the two big decks I'm running into. I've run into some Tempo Mage. Okay, so I had a few different options here. 
Well, not necessarily. I <laughs> really had to play one of my keepers. Um, but silencing that Drake is a must. Keeping a handlock board clear is very important if you're trying to maintain uh, maintain tempo. Now I get a pretty terrible card. It could be good, a 1-1, and when you attack, say, an 8-8 giant with taunt, it would kill it. But <laughs> you could use Shadow Flame, Hellfire. A couple different spells would remove it. Now, for a second, I was considering the unorthodox swipe the face here, <laughs> just to get some damage in. But swipe could be very important with the 8-8 eight eight giants later, so I'm going to hold on to it. Don't really have any big plays I need to make right now, so I'm just going to play the other wild growth. Get some damage in. All right, there's the unfortunate hellfire. And a dark bomb even to clear my board. But that was a pretty desperate move, I'd say. So I feel like I'm ahead now. So I'm just going to draw cards. Oh, the other thing I was going to mention earlier when I was thinking of my variations in Druid, um, how I run the Earthen Ring Farseer and a Healing Touch. I also only run one combo set, one... Um, spell or one um two attack to everything and then the two two treants one of each uh, most often you see two savage roars so naked sylvanas is not always the best thing he could silence it he might have another si uh, siphon soul but still those are passive plays from him he's not getting his giants out and the sylvanas also sort of locks down a giant play unless he also um, silences afterward. Okay, Sludge Belcher. So we could silence it here. Um, we could just straight up attack it and still have Sylvanas be alive. And perfect, we drew Emperor. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Reduce the cost of all these pretty juicy cards in our hand. Not juicy as they are right now, but as reduced costs. This can be a pretty devastating killer combo coming up here. So I'm telling him sorry, hoping he might already concede, thinking I have combo <laughs> and I'm reducing it. I have half of it and a swipe. And I could potentially do uh, two face damage with the keeper. So I am getting pretty darn close to threatening lethal here. <laughs> you, if you've watched the videos uh, previously in this series, I hate when people take forever to take their turn. I've gone on a couple rants about it, so I will save you any more rants, but you know my frustrations. So he's doing more and more passive plays here, just trying to stay alive. Maybe he doesn't have any giants. <laughs> Alright, but we're sitting on a wrath here. We're still pretty close to lethal with um, the Trian swipe, the Innervate into the Keeper. But with the two taunts, unfortunately, we're not at lethal yet. So I'm going to trade Sylvanas into the 4-5, take his 2-3, clear his board. Set up a lethal for next turn Let none survive. and we're also going to get to reduce the cost of our cards again so pretty darn devastating for him so again I'm <laughs> I don't know why I become such a jerk in Hearthstone, but it's probably because I get put on tilt a lot of the time because I never squelch my opponents when they do things like that, spam me with emotes, like taunting me. I always like get more mad. So I try and use that 
poker idea of tilts, try and get my opponents mad and off their game. All right, pretty unfortunate there. We could silence the Giants. We can swipe the 4-5. <laughs> Yikes. So he concedes here while we're trying to do this math in our head, make sure we have lethal. And there we go. <laughs> Perfect. So I'm freaking out here because the highest I've ever been in Hearthstone before was one season. Uh, I think three months ago or two months ago, I was one star into rank four. But then I lost my next game, so I stopped because I did not want to rank down. I was, I don't even like play a ranked game the final like 13 days of that season. That's how paranoid I was. But I'm not afraid of ranking down anymore. When I was trying to hit rank four again... I ranked back down to 6 several times, but I kept getting back to rank 5, and now I'm back up to rank 4, so I'm confident in my abilities. I'm really going to try and make a push for Legend now. Um, this weekend, I'm going to try and play a lot before I have to grade final papers, but again, I am teaching a summer class. The final papers are coming up. I don't know if I'll be able to um, go as hard as I wanted to this month to reach Legend. I am proud of what I've accomplished thus far, but maybe we could try it again in July. So I will be teaching another class then, but that's life. Unfortunately, I'm not a full-time streamer or anything. Where <laughs> this is my focus, as much as I love Hearthstone. All right, so I'm going to do the classic uh, rogue move there and play <laughs> a Earthen Ring Farseer, even though I don't have to heal, just to get a body out there. Because you don't want a handlock just to feel like they can be passive, keep tapping into things. You want to make them feel that, oh gosh, they're moving into something. So again, I'm going to keep her to silence Drake, get it out of the way. Considering uh, innovating here, and I decide to do it, I could have hero powered, but eh. I want to both kill it and get the card draw, so I opt for the wrath there. Two minions out there, pretty good. Oh, sorry if you heard my Skype message. I was freaking out to my good friend Gino that I'm back to rank four. And here we go, commentating that very game. So he plays his other Drake, but we're hiding our other minions behind a Sludge Belcher, which is always nice. I've gone on rants about Arcane Intellect and Mage decks before. Using Mortal Coil and Handlock is very dumb to me. You'll very, very rarely get value on it. I guess that's why he plays Implosion. So he could like Mortal Coil his own imps <laughs> a lot of the time if he can't do it to an enemy. Um, so I'm looking at the best swipe option here. Obviously it's going to be attacking the Drake, but then I was thinking of which trades to make. Or if there are any other better options to play Lothab, cancel out a spell, or draw into cards. No. <laughs> so I decided to go with the swipe. Alright, so we have no way to get rid of that right now. We could just play our own Belcher, but that's a passive play. I don't like that. We could draw into cards here. But because my board's starting to fill up, I'm going to play Lothab to cancel out his spell options. And clear um, his sludge belcher and his board. So we're in really good shape here. I think he even concedes right here. <laughs> He's kind of locked out. Yep, there we go. So <laughs> awesome. Now I'm back up to the highest rank I've ever been. One star into rank four. This has been Jeff from Respawn Studios for my Up the Ladder series. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see if I'm able to make another part.